in Bethania Chapel Graveyard, Talog, is this monument to Emily Phillips, whose affiliation case was once notorious in this small hamlet and beyond. Emily was the daughter of David and Mary Ann Phillips of the Castle Inn, Talog. As well as being the landlord of the inn, David was a cooper. The couple had three sons and three daughters living, having buried two children, Benjamin, who died aged one week in 1877, and Eliza Ann, who died aged three months in 1883. In 1901, they lived at the Castle Inn with their daughter Mary Jane and son John Albert. The two oldest boys, Goma and Thomas, had gone to Aberdare to work on the railway, and their youngest daughter, Emily, aged 15, was working as a general servant at Vachthi Farm, a few miles away. A year later, Emily found she was pregnant. She named Thomas Williams, aged 22, the oldest son of the farmer at Vachthi, John Jones Williams, as the father of her child. He denied it, but Emily insisted he was the father and the child was born a few days before Christmas in 1902. In March 1903, then 17-year-old Emily brought an affiliation case against Thomas Williams. Such cases were usually over quickly. The magistrates either doubted the girl's morals and threw the case out, or if they believed she had been seduced, usually with promises of marriage, found in her favour and the father was ordered to pay a weekly sum until the child was 14 years of age and old enough to begin working. Emily's case proved to be problematic. It was heard at Carmarthen and Thomas Williams refused to admit he was the father of her child, which meant poor Emily's case became a public spectacle. The Williams family of Vachthi were not poor tenant farmers. They owned their land and prospered on it. Thomas was the oldest son and heir to the farm. He stood to inherit a good deal on the death of his father. He could surely have afforded a few shillings a week to pay towards raising the child, but he was obdurate. As a result, the case had to be heard over several sittings and all the gory details gone over in public. The court was packed with what the newspapers described as the whole population, practically, of Trelech and Talog. Some to support the young girl in her case against her unrepentant seducer, others just to enjoy the salacious details of familiarities which had taken place in the very unromantic locations of a straw room, a pigsty and on the roadside. Over 30 witnesses were called, including, incredibly, two surveyors who were called to dispose as to distances and localities. The magistrates sat through six hours of proceedings, left the courtroom to consider the case and only seven minutes later returned with a unanimous verdict. Thomas Williams was indeed the father of the child. He was ordered to pay three shillings a week to Emily and also to pay her expenses and the fees of her solicitor, Mr Henry Brunel White. This was greeted with applause in court and there were more joyous scenes outside the court as Emily's supporters celebrated. But if Emily thought this was the end of the matter, she was to be sorely disappointed. Thomas Williams was furious. He resolved he wouldn't pay her a penny, and he didn't. One Friday evening in March, a constable turned up at Vachthi with a warrant. He asked Thomas to pay the £22.10 shillings he owed to Emily, and when Thomas refused, he took him into custody, and Thomas was locked up in Carmarthen Police Station for the night. The next day, Mr White applied for a committal if the money was not forthcoming. It was not and Thomas found himself again before the magistrates. The chairman asked Thomas if he intended to pay the money he owed to Emily, and he replied he wouldn't, because it does not belong to me. The reply came, that has nothing to do with it. The court has already made the order adjudging you to be the father, and it must be enforced. You had your remedy, if you wished it, by appealing to the quarter sessions in the ordinary way, and that you have not done. Thomas Williams answered, 
I have made up my mind not to pay as I am not the father. Mr D.L. Jones, magistrate, ended the matter saying, Although we are very sorry to see a man of your position so perverse and determined not to fall in with the order of the court, it is our duty, painful though it may be, to send you to prison for three months. Being sent to Carmarthen Jail didn't immediately break Thomas Williams' resolve. He stuck it out for two of the three months before he cracked and paid up. Emily must have thought her ordeal was now over. It wasn't. Thomas had paid what he owed up to the time of his release, but this stubborn young man decided not to pay anything more and was therefore soon in arrears. On August the 12th, he found out Emily intended to summon him again for the arrears and he fled. On the 11th of September, he was caught and brought before a special sitting of the magistrates. Thomas Williams was still refusing to pay and denying he was the father of the child. I have never had anything to do with the girl in my life, he declared, and complained about people annoying him about the case, and he was sent back to prison for one month. On his release in October, he was immediately arrested again, as he owed 21 shillings. Instead of paying, well, I'm sure you can guess, he went straight back inside. Eventually, the constant incarceration got to him and the magistrates did not see any more of him until March 1906, a full three years after the first case began. He had stopped paying the money to Emily and owed £13 for shillings. He was again sent back to prison for two months. Poor Emily must have had a difficult time raising Percy, her son, on the erratic and often absent money from William Thomas. Any hopes of marriage she had entertained were long gone. Women in such cases were considered ruined and rarely married. She was living with her parents. In 1906, her sister Mary Jane married John Jones, a blacksmith of Capaldowie at Tabernacle Baptist Church in Carmarthen, and Emily was the bridesmaid. A year later, Thomas Williams' sister Iva was married in what was described in the papers as a pretty and fashionable wedding at Trelech Parish Church. Flowers decorated the church and garlands were stretched across the roads at frequent intervals. A carpet was laid from the churchyard gate to the church door and the bridesmaid was given a gold bangle as a memento. All her family were there with one notable exception. Thomas Williams did not attend, nor is his, his name on the 1911 census at Vachthi. So what happened to him? I don't know. Perhaps he was disinherited by his father for bringing shame on the family. Perhaps he died. Perhaps he left the area. Whatever happened to him, his refusal to pay did him no credit. In the 1911 census, Emily and her eight-year-old son were living at Cartrev with her parents and youngest brother, John Arthur, an apprentice carpenter. Her father was 57 by this time and working as a road labourer, a hard job. Emily was contributing to the family finances by sewing quilts. On the 1st of July 1911, Emily died, leaving her son to be brought up by her parents. I don't know the cause of death, but she was only 25. It had been a hard and a short life for this young Welsh woman. I hope you found Emily's story interesting. If so, please remember to hit the like button and have a look at my other videos. And as always, thank you for watching.